Welcome to Democracy, Democracy 2020, a very special show for the Schwing Dynasty. Uh, we're going to get started today with recounting our best ball performances. Um, the best balls, best weeks, if you will. We're going to start at the top. Uh, we're going to go with Steve. Steve had 186 balls, best balls, the bestest balls of them all this week, followed closely by Lucas, who had two fewer balls than Steve, which is exactly what we would expect from Lucas. Uh, he had 184, by the way. Uh, I had came in third, a surprise third place finish for yours truly, with 170 of the bestest balls in the world. Uh, Sean with a 168. Phil, our league leader, coming in the middle of the pack, did not seem to hurt his standings too badly, of course, because he's uh, way up the top. Phil with 153 balls, best balls. Uh, Mark with 146. JD with 141. Daryl with 137. And Adam, a once proud member of the top two, dropping this week due to 127 balls of them all, of the wall. So uh, let's get into some highlights and lowlights of the week. We had the worst play of the week came via Phil. Part of what brought him down to the midpoint of the pack was the need to start Tyler Higby, uh, Higby with 3.4 points. So that was the worst performance of a starter this week. And Lucas with the best performance from Dalvin Cook, 56.1 points, helping him to that number two spot. Um, there is no recount needed here. Uh, Steve got the week uh, high, Adam the week low. And the standings now sit at Phil, Overall, 1482. Sean, 1407. Sean into second place now. Lucas all the way up to third at 1394. I don't know where he was before, so I don't know if it's all the way up, actually. I could be completely full of crap there. Adam at three, 1379. Daryl at 1351. Bert in sixth at 1348. Me, seven, 1303. Steve, 1280. Mark, 1258. And JD, at 11.53, the only person yet to crack 1,200 points. Um, now we're going to go into our normal coverage of the previous week for Schwing Dynasty. So let's look at last week. Let's start off with the game between the, uh, the uh, slasher movie Murderer, uh, the Fantasy Eraser, against the uh, Ikea of McCaffrey, who I called... Um, I don't remember. Uh, I, can't, I don't know what I gave Lucas last week. I should have written that down. Um, me versus Lucas, 163 to 143. I got the win. I go to 6-2. and two. He goes to 2-6. and six. Palindrome continues. And the MVP of this game is Mr. Keenan Allen. So consistent. 21 points. Um, that's kind of scary for me when my MVP's only got 21 points. Uh, Tannehill scored more, but for Keenan Allen as a wide receiver to get 21 points, that's my MVP. Man, I put Keenan Allen on the trade block back at the beginning of the year. Got some eh, not very good offers uh, for Mr. Keenan Allen. Uh, and Lord have mercy, am I glad I kept him now that he's one of my best performers. 21 points this week, 22 points last week, 26 points a couple weeks ago, or a few weeks ago. Uh, Lucas had the dumb sit of Naheem Hines. 23 points, uh, could have replaced uh, Lamaje, Lamichael, Lamaje, that's a Samaje and Lamichael uh, com com combination there with Lamaje, Lamaje Pirine, uh, who had 7.3 points, that would have been a difference of almost 16 points, and it would have put Lucas behind by just 4 points in our matchup, still would have lost, but would have been a nice, uh, keep it more interesting, um, I get the win, 6-2, and two. next up, Oregon Beer Force, versus Sean, uh, the Portland Gossamers, okay? We've got the uh, Hydra versus the Red Hairy Beast from Looney Tunes, who, of course, is Mr. Gossamer. Uh, Sean is the Portland Gossamers now. Um, this was the Large Marge game of the week. Be sure and tell them Large Marge sent you. You don't, if you've never seen Pee-wee's Big Adventure, by the way, and you don't have any idea what the fuck that clip is from, that's Pee-wee's Big Adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure and tell them Large Marge sent you. I know Adam knows that. I'm sure some of you have seen Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Um, well, underrated movie. One of the most fucked up movies I've ever seen in my entire life, honestly. Terrified me as a kid at times. Um, probably pretty good on drugs. I haven't actually watched it on, on anything. Um, actually, I haven't watched it since I was a kid. So, you know, I had a pretty 
I had a pretty lame, sober, you know, adolescent time. Just so straight edge from the ages of six till 14. Just so, just totally ridiculous. But anyways, um, yeah, this was uh, the large Marge game of the week. Mark went 177 and <laughs> Sean got 84. Yeah, points, points, 84. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's almost 100 points. That's, wow. Sean, I didn't realize, I didn't even look at the, the score here exactly, but um, that's amazing. That is, that is amazing. Uh, <laughs> difference there. It's a, what, a 93-point lead? 93-point lead for uh, Mark in this game. Seven and one Mark now, three and five Sean. I, I just, I can't, I was, there's a couple games in this that uh, prove I should have stuck to my, my early rankings where I had, I guess I had Sean higher though. Yes, I did. I had Sean in my position group rankings higher because of his running backs. But I had Lucas low and then I bumped him up based on last season and my impression of his team. Even after I looked at his position groups and said, Lucas is gonna struggle. And then I bumped him up because of just a personal belief or gut feeling, I guess. And I, my position group, group rankings for Lucas were correct. Should have stuck him there. Sean I had higher, though, when I moved him down. I could not have imagined him scoring 84 points with uh, his full complement of running backs, I think, this week. Uh, the MVP of this game, not going to give it to Russell Wilson, who had 31 points. I'm going to give it to Corey Davis and his 26 points because the impact is much higher when Corey Davis scores 26 than when Russ gets 30. So that's the MVP of this game for Mark, uh, just because of the points above what he probably should have done. All right, next up, just duck it versus tits. Phil, Phil B. Darrell. Uh, this was a uh, potential game of the week uh, because of their equal ranking and their close scores, and it probably should have been score-wise the game of the week. Uh, 161 for Phil to 164 for Daryl. Absolutely uh, nail-biter. I projected that the MVP of this game would be the Mahomes-Hill stack, and it was. Uh, Mahomes got 46 Dar uh, for Daryl. Tyreek got 25. They were the difference in this game, definitely. I mean, they, uh, they them crushing allowed Daryl to eke out the uh, the win against Phil. Um, Michael Gallup was the dumb sit, 14 points for Phil. Could have replaced DeAndre Swift with that position. No one was starting Michael Gallup this last week. Totally understand that. Most people aren't even starting, you know, CeeDee Lamb, and it's even getting hard to start Amari Cooper with Ben DiNucci at that quarterback spot. Man, talk about a team. Go out and get yourself a Marcus Mariota. Go trade for Jameis Winston. I'm not saying they're going to be cheap. You have a, an offense that can play. Maybe they're looking and saying, our defense is just too bad. Dallas is trying to tank a little bit. That could be the, the reason. Um, but, man, those playmakers, such a waste if you drafted those guys in a non-dynasty, which I did in a couple of leagues, um, including Zeke because I can just stack the box against Zeke now. All right, so if he had started Michael Gallup instead of DeAndre Swift, Phil would have won this game. Phil would have been sitting at 4-4, four and four, and Daryl would have been sitting at 3-5. and five. But alas, that is not what happened. Phil goes to 3-5, Daryl's at 4-4. Four and four. Ball game tits. All right, um, next game. Crazy, crazy game. So brutal. Cali style against Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, 131 for JD's team, 132 for Adams. What a game. Uh, so brutal for, for JD here. Uh, so, so, so amazing for Adam, who moves to 4-4. Four and four. JD falls to 2-6. and six. Uh, Incredible. Um, the MVP of this game is Brandon Ayuk uh, for the 49ers, who is, of course, now hurt because he's a 49er. It's like my entire fantasy team and my entire favorite team. Injured the whole team. Um, 23 points for Ayuk in that game. Now he's hurt, of course. Dumb sit for JD. Willie Sneed, 15 points on the bench. Instead of AJ Green, who got 3.9, would have given JD the lead. I don't know what Adam left on his bench, but, I, uh, I, you know, I only give the dumb sit to the losers. So, all right, now it's time for the game of the week with the uh, emphasis being on the W-E-A-K week, because this was a weak game of the week. Uh, we got Hanoi Janes, the Bigfoot. Love it. I love you guys breaking out the Halloween mascots, Gossamers, Portland Gossamers, and, uh, and Bigfoot here. Um, 195 for the Hanoi Janes for Burt. 
Burt's folks to 167 for Bigfoot, not quite big enough. And this is on a week when Josh Allen got 15.96 points, and uh, Steve couldn't beat that. So I know Steve's – the rest of Burt's team balled the fuck out, though. Uh, you know, he's got Dalvin Cook on there for 56 points. So, yeah, he made up for it. And uh, uh, Robert Woods, too. Hey, Daryl, yeah, what? No, that can't feel good. Robert Woods gets 28 points for the Burt man. That I mean, that's I mean that's kind of what happened when I traded Johnny Smith, even though I would not be playing him at this point at all. But uh, 28 points for Robert Woods this week. God damn, I hope Chase Edmonds is good, brother. I hope Chase Edmonds is good. That's all, that's all there is there. So, dumb sit of the week, Chase Claypool for uh, Bigfoot. Would have been 15 points. Better than Cole Beasley's 4.4. Would not have mattered, but there we go. All right, standings now. We're going to go into standings each week because – the playoffs are fast approaching, gentlemen. We've got Mark at 7-1. We've got me at 6-2. and two. Uh, I should be the new Smoke and Mirrors because there's no fucking way I should be up there. But alas, that's where we are at. I should say halas because, you know, whatever. Bert, 5-3. and three. Uh, Steve, 4-4. Four and four. Daryl, 4-4. Four and four. Adam, 4-4. Four and four. Rounding out the playoffs, which means that currently in the toilet bowl, we've got Phil at 3-5. and five. Sean at three and five, and then Lucas and JD at the two and six, rounding out the toilet bowl. Looking like uh, right now, next season. Is it the season? Like it's looking like next season. Mark would uh, currently be able to set JD's team name for this next season. So uh, that's our punishment. Don't forget for losing the toilet bowl, the winner of the championship gets to name your team next season. So. JD, man, yeah, don't want to lose that toilet bowl. God knows what Mark would be calling you. Probably the, the biggest wild card in our league for naming a person's team would be Mark. You, I, don't, I don't want my team named by Mark. I would not. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know what it would be, man. I, I, I worry for you. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, we have some breaking news. We're going to go to our breaking news desk. Uh, yes, we're going to go right to our breaking news desk right now, everybody. There is some major breaking news. Yes, hello. This is uh, me with some breaking news for you. Uh, we are getting some confirmation that to this point, Lucas has still not done his shot or wine chug from his loss to Mark. And I'm also receiving word at this hour, we can confirm that Bert still sucks. That is all for now. Okay, thank you. That's uh, that's amazing um, news coming in now. So let's get that together, fellas. Let's try to clean that action up, okay? Uh, but now that that breaking news is done, we're going to go into our previews for this, this week. Um, all right. Week 9. That's five weeks of swing regular season left before week 14, 15, 16 playoffs. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's double counting my math right there really quickly. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's five. Uh, week nine in the uh, coming up on the docket here. First game we're going to look at is a brotherly matchup. Me versus Adam. Fantasy Eraser versus Smoke and Mirrors. I am six and two. He is four and four. This is a matchup of two playoff teams as unlikely as that might be. Uh, right now, the projection is heavily favoring Fantasy Eraser, 172 to 139, although it is 2020 and anything can happen. Uh, this is a game about my injuries, as every game that I'm in becomes about my injuries because it's my team and my show. So, Saquon Barkley, Marlon Mack, now Miles Gaskin, Dak Prescott, and Chris Godwin continue to be hampered by injuries on the same week that Daryl Henderson is on a bye. Uh, that is giving Adam a definite opportunity to catch my team in this week, okay? So the question is, can Josh Jacobs score some points? Some touchdowns would be nice from Josh Jacobs. And for him, for Adam, for uh, Smoke and Mirrors, can Drew Brees score the ball against, uh, score the ball, score some points against Tampa Bay? And will Zeke or CeeDee Lamb possibly be any good? This is asking from a Zeke manager in another league and a CD Lamb manager in another league. Please, I, I am, my margin will allow Zeke or CD to score some points this week. Find a way, Mike McCarthy, to get those men some points, 
We need it. We need it. Um, I'm picking myself. Uh, it's a big spread. Right now it's a 43-point uh, spread uh, between Adam and myself, so I'm picking me. All right. I go to 7-2. He would drop to 4-5. and five. Precarious in the playoff race, especially with his points for and points against differential. All right. Next game up, the Hanoi Janes versus the Portland Gossamers. We have last week's high score against last week's low score, and it's the projections are surprisingly close, although Sean's projections have consistently seemed higher than they actually, uh, the actual results. 177 to 157. This is a palindrome game, five and three to three and five. Antonio Gibson versus the New York Giants. Give him the ball, come on. God, he is clearly better than their other running back options. And this, again, comes from a person who manages Antonio Gibson in three other leagues. And every time I see him uh, working his ass off for an 18-yard gain, and then I see J.D. McKissick come in and get some little simple pass, and it's freaking wide open for him. No, No special ability being shown. It's just the play calling when he's in there. Um, maybe they don't expect McKissick to get the ball, uh, but when McKissick gets the ball in a tough situation that I, that Gibson would grind out three or four or five yards, he gets stuffed. So give Gibson the ball, and for God's sakes, retire Peyton Barber. Uh, anyways, what's the Lev Bell impact going to be on CEH? I think that's becoming more and more uh, apparent each week what will happen with that. Um, and Jonathan Taylor Thomas's health, okay? For those last two were for, for the Gossamers. I've got Burt, I've got the Hanno Giants winning this one. It is 177 to 157 spread. I've got it bigger than that. I'm going to go 30 plus. There it is. Um, all right, next up, Just Duck It versus Ikea of McCaffrey. Phil versus Lucas. We got a 3-5 and five team and Just Duck It against a 2-6. and six. Ikea McCaffrey, this is a Toilet Bowl matchup. Two Toilet Bowl participants currently. Um... Phil's projected at 171 this week, a very respectable third highest score projection, I believe, in the, uh, no, sorry, fifth, uh, fifth highest because of the next page had two higher ones. Uh, fifth highest, but still a respectable 171 point projection against a respectable 162 point projection for Lucas's McCaffrey team. I like the Ikea of McCaffrey name because the stuff looks real, but it breaks rather easily, apparently, maybe like Lucas's team. So uh, Phil needs a win now. If he wants to get out of the toilet bowl, I, I believe he needs a win this game. He has to have it. He's got Mark and then me and then Daryl coming up. That's three teams in the playoffs right now um, who all can put up points. Not that we always do. Phil could beat all three of us. I mean, he built, beat me earlier this year in my lowest, I think, scoring point week of the year. But he can he can score enough to beat any of those teams. I just don't think he will beat more than one of us, okay? So I think Phil needs a win this week against Lucas. I don't think he can uh, afford to drop to three and six right now. Um, I think he will get it, but this is Kamara's foot health. He has a bone bruise. Just like the worst sounding shit. I, bone bruise sounds so bad. I don't know if I've ever had a bone bruise, but I imagine it hurts a lot to have. I mean, think about what, what a bruise is. It's like bleeding into your muscle. What is a bone bruise? Like, a, like it got crushed a little bit or like there's some blood seeping through it from the marrow or there's, is there blood in the marrow? I don't even know that shit, man. I honestly, I know that it, the marrow is important for blood. You know, put cells out. I don't know what the fuck a bone bruise is, is what we're, <laughs> what we're learning right now. Um, anyways, so Kamara's health uh, is, a, is a problem for Phil if he's, if he's hurt. Obviously, it has been, uh, he, or he has been his best player. Um, and Lucas has a Herbert matchup. Justin Herbert, sudden, suddenly a point producer against uh, Las Vegas, who gives up points to the quarterback at times. So this is going to be a good game ish but i've got phil winning uh probably more than the current nine point spread but those things give me pause they do give me pause all right next up a large marge lookout game cali style versus the oregon beer force okay you've got 118 projection for cali style a 163 projection for mark 
currently, I don't know if you guys haven't put your rosters in yet, so I just say what I see. Uh, I do look through them, but maybe you have other players you want to slide in that have a higher projection. I don't didn't go that deep on it. That's a 45-point spread, though, to start the week out. Uh, this is a 2-6 and six and a 7-1 and one team, so we know who's the favorite here. Uh, but Seattle goes against Buffalo at Buffalo in the morning game. Okay, 9 a.m., West Coast kickoff. Um, that's not true at all. I think it's a 9 p.m. kickoff here, 10 a.m. West Coast kickoff. So, yeah, 10 a.m. He's got the early West Coast game traveling across the country. We know that's been a problem for teams in the past. We know it's been a problem for Seattle in the past uh, going out to those early matchups. I think of Carolina a few years ago right before the playoffs or in the playoffs. Um, takes them a while to get started, okay? Now, that might mean that Russ has got to throw the ball all over the field if Carolina can get a couple quick scores or something like that. So it gives J.D. a shot potentially, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, Oregon Beer Force gets the win. All right, now on to the game of the week. Steven Darrell, I feel like you guys have been in this game of the week thing a lot this year, but here we go again. It is an important game. This is tits versus Bigfoot. Tits foot. Big tits foot. Uh, Bigfoot tits, Bigfoot tits. It's a good one. Bigfoot tits. I should have mixed the order up. Okay, uh, these are two four and four teams, playoff contenders. Super important. Phil is. Uh, Phil could potentially. No, Phil. I don't think Phil would pass either of these teams if he gets the win. Um, he would pass Adam if Adam loses. So Phil's rooting for that and the win. Uh, I think based on points four, he would pass Adam. Uh, but this is a big game. This is a big game. 182 to 173 is the spread. The return of Aaron Jones, the debut of Chase Edmonds as a tit, and the debut of Antonio Brown as a tit. We've got two new tits involved here. That's a good day. It's a good damn day. Um, and a returning tit. It's always good to get a flashback tit. You know, that's always good too. So, uh, hopefully the return of the tit, uh, Aaron Jones. I want our bets to keep going. I want to see. I want a real bet here. Um, that's a lot of crazy, crazy stuff, crazy tits going on. But I see Derrick Henry, Devontae Adams, and I see Travis Kelsey for Steve. And um, I'm going against what I originally thought was happening, where Daryl wins, and I'm going to pick Bigfoot to win this one um, because Travis Kelsey. You know, as well as things where Daryl is like, yeah, I scored with Patrick Mahomes. Oh, to Kelsey again. And if, okay, if Travis, if Travis Kelsey outscores Tyree Kill by five points or more, Steve wins. That's what I'm going to call here. Tyree Kill, or Travis Kelsey outscores Tyree Kill by five points or more, Steve wins. I just want to see if that works out. So don't forget that I said that because I want to. I want to see if uh, if that follows. Um, otherwise, Tits wins. I'm picking Kelsey for a big game, though. I'm picking Bigfoot to win this very important game of the week. All right, brothers. That's it for Democracy, Democracy 2020. Enjoy your days. Enjoy your weekends. Oh, my God. I forgot. What? Oh, well, here we go. Have a good weekend, guys. I forgot to be drinking my beer in this episode. I forgot the club swing music. That's okay. This is more serious. This is democracy we're talking about. All right. Peace out.